Good morning, Houston, and welcome to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever. Each Saturday from 6 to 7 a.m., we'll share with you practical preventive medicine, steps that you can take starting right away to regain and maintain better health. Each week, we'll update you on books you need to read, whether written by me or by one of my many friends on what's called complementary or integrative medicine. We'll update you on what you need to know to stay healthier today, and we'll share interviews with patients and with experts. So get your pen and paper ready now so you won't miss ideas that you want to remember. And write down topics that you'd like to hear more about, authors and experts you'd like for me to interview for you, so you remember to share these with us for future programs. We'll be talking about what you can do to get out of your pain and get on with your life. I've researched and practiced here in Metro Houston for 25 years, never believing that you're suffering from a deficiency of one or more drugs or that an operation is probably the best answer. Whatever ails you, God built your system to repair itself and to restore more normal function, and that, in a nutshell, is the whole buzz on the topic of alternative or holistic medicine you've been hearing about these past few years. Drugs and surgery can be helpful, but true natural healing depends on three factors. First, find what's blocking you from feeling better and remove it. Second, find what trace factors you might be missing but you need for repair and provide them. And third, find what switches need to be turned on and then turn them on. We'll share practical pointers to help you improve with the most common problems seen in doctors' offices, practical preventive medicine updates to help reduce your risk factors for the most serious diseases that claim our comfort and then our lives, and practical ways to reduce your risks and improve your results with drugs and surgery that you might need. As I've said for years, when life is your choice, failure is not an option. So learn more today on how you can succeed. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 1, verse 9, that there is no new thing under the sun. So let's see what we might learn from those who've walked the path ahead of us. David Nichols offered the perspective that there are 10 or 20 basic truths, and life is the process of discovering them over and over and over. And the most important part about that perspective is how true it is, how We seemingly get something down. We seemingly have the idea. We seemingly got it. And then we get another opportunity to get it again. Linda and Alvin wrote to us to ask to help explain significant gut diseases, not just the simple ones like constipation and GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So today we're going to talk about inflammatory bowel disease, sometimes called IBD. We'll start with some background information on digestion and the immune system. You know, poor digestion, which is awfully common. If you take a look at the television advertisements, everybody's trying to spell relief or get their gut working better or get their gut working at all. But poor digestion results in two primary problems. First, food is not broken down into the elemental building blocks necessary for the body to rebuild itself and to generate energy for metabolism. You know, you're made of food parts that are chopped up and rearranged into people parts. And, of course, if you eat plastic food, you get plastic people, which is why we want to talk about feeling better naturally. At a cellular level, toxins are not removed from the cells and sufficient nutrition is not moved into the cell. Not enough energy is provided for the cell to function. And these effects can be seen all throughout your systems. These are the vague not feeling well before you finally develop diseases. And the problems come in the immune system as well, such as white blood cells, which then lack the fuel and the oxygen to carry out their normal defense function. The second and even more significant problem with poor digestion is that maldigestion results in food remnants in the gut, leftovers, if you will, causing several pathological reactions. They irritate the intestines, causing an increase permeability of the cells in the intestinal wall. That means leaky. It means they're not digesting and holding their their own as well they should. Undigested protein can then leak across into the lymphatic system and then into the general circulation. The immune system reacts to these, uh, considering them foreign invaders. The immune system becomes overtaxed and finally runs down, and oxygen and fuel get used up. The immune cells wear out faster, do not reproduce in sufficient numbers. That means your immunity is going down, 
And these undigested food remnants can also be a breeding ground for yeast, a fungus, and several types of parasites. So candidiasis, a fungus infection, which we call the yeast syndrome, the name of my book, produces toxins that cause increased digestive dysfunction, more problems, including food allergies, fatigue, and a host of other problems. And ultimately, this causes the immune system to become even further depressed. The inflammation in the intestines causes further damage by causing reactions that produce oxidative free radicals as waste byproducts. Now, those are big terms, but you've heard of antioxidants such as vitamin C and vitamin E. Well, they are anti because of the oxidative free radicals that are very damaging. These negatively charged oxygen molecules begin to chop holes in the membranes, the cell walls, in their attempt to grab a positive charge and this results in further damage to the intestinal walls and ever-increasing permeability, the leaky gut syndrome. This increases with more food particles going into the blood. Now, this might sound like a little technical discussion, but I want you to see there's actually a molecular explanation in order for you to make sense out of what's going on in life. Inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, refers to two chronic intestinal disorders. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. They're pretty similar. We'll discuss them more as a group. Inflammatory bowel disease affects between 2 to 6% of Americans. The uh, causes of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, in quotes, are not known. A leading theory suggests that uh, some sort of agent, perhaps a virus or bacterium, alters the body's immune response, triggering an inflammatory reaction in the intestinal wall. And certainly some of the treatment programs would support this idea. The onset for both diseases peaks during young adulthood, and an individual with either disease may suffer persistent abdominal pain, bowel sores, diarrhea, fever, intestinal bleeding, or even weight loss. Now, this is different than irritable bowel syndrome, which is a common functional disorder of the intestines estimated to affect about 5 million Americans. Doctor refer to, doctors refer to IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, as a functional disorder because there's no sign of disease when the colon is examined. However, doctors believe that people with IBS experience abnormal patterns of colon movement, and the irritable bowel colon is highly sensitive, overreacting to any stimuli such as gas, stress, or eating high-fat or fiber-rich foods. Now, we actually find other explanations in our practice for this. Again, that's what's different. Digestive diseases cost nearly $107 billion in direct health care expenditures in 1992. Digestive diseases result in nearly 200 million sick days and 59 or more million visits to physicians each year. 16.9 million days lost from school, as well as nearly 200,000 deaths per year and several million hospitalizations. Interestingly enough, just as a fact, the human gut contains about one kilogram or 2.2 pounds of bacteria. That's normal, in fact. There are more bacteria growing in and on the body than there are human cells. And that uh, little fact ought to be cheerful for just about anyone, right? The concept to have in mind is that irritable bowel is different from inflammatory bowel disease. And today we're joined by Mr. Steve Roberts of Conroe, who has uh, his story to share about inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis. Steve, welcome to the show. Good morning, Dr. Corbridge. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? We're doing great, and I know you are too. And that oh, was yeah. so exciting when you agreed to, to talk with us about your problem. My pleasure. How did it start? Well, uh, it goes all the way back to 1989, actually. Um, I didn't really, I was just doing my own thing. I was working, uh, driving a truck at night, and so I had a kind of a strange schedule, working six nights a week, and so my body was just kind of out of sorts all the time. I didn't I didn't know when to sleep and, you know, when I was going to be awake or anything like that. But I just remember coming down with a mild fever and then symptoms of diarrhea, and I didn't think anything about it. I thought, well, you know, this will go away in a couple of days. Well, a couple of days became a week and then two weeks and then a month and then two months, and I still had it and I got real concerned about it, and um, I started losing weight. 
And that's when I really uh, decided to go to the doctor and find out what was going on. Steve, you obviously had something serious, and that is when people should go to the doctor to, to find out what's going on. We'll be right back with you, if you will. The time now is about 10 past the hour, and you're listening to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. Your extended health forecast is brought to you now by Life Celebrating Health in Humble near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Our crystal ball shows clear to partly cloudy with the winds of change blowing. If you're choosing to make changes to regain and maintain better health, sunny skies are coming your way. If you don't know what you can do or if you're not changing anything and simply hoping for the best because you've been feeling good, you know, no problems, then partly cloudy to stormy skies are on your horizon. At Life Celebrating Health, you can depend on us as partners in your health care and we'll design personalized programs to help keep your days sunny. Call for a telephone consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. 1-800-FIX-PAIN. Ask to receive our free e-newsletter. Just share with us your email address or send your questions to us through our Internet website, www.healthchoicesnow.com. Because unlike the weather, you do have choices for better health. You know, Steve, you went to the doctor, one of the smart things to do in life, and sometimes we seem reluctant to do so, but you had some serious concerns. Well, I knew, uh, you know, when you start losing weight and you just feel generally fatigued all the time, I knew I had to do something. Uh, I knew it was beyond just uh, taking over-the-counter medications, and so I sought the help of doctors in Conroe, and uh, one of the first things they did was they tested me for parasites, and it just went from there. Well, now, that makes sense, you know, because people come in with gut disturbances like you and weight loss, and living so close as we do to an American border, uh, we have the exposure to parasites. In fact, a friend of mine wrote a book, uh, Guess What's Coming to Dinner? And uh, indeed, more of us have parasites than uh, you would ever believe. Well, I understand. It's even in, in, it can even be in the drinking water. Exactly. Right. So um, I was concerned. Uh, you know, going to the doctors, I was hoping that it was just something, um, I know this sounds kind of uh, strange, I was hoping it was just something as, Minor as parasites, right? It turned out to be something quite, uh, quite more drastic. And how long ago was this? This was back in 1989. This is too young to be facing something quite drastic. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was 29, and I felt like I was 89. Wow. So uh, I went to the doctors in, up in Conroe, and I had the short colon test done. Right. And uh, I was limited because I didn't have any health insurance, and so I was limited to how far I could uh, take the. Uh, you know, get their uh, help. Um, I had uh, several tests done, but they really uh, wanted to do larger and larger tests, you know, the whole, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the full colon test and all that, and uh, I just started running out of money. Well, you know, the, the problem with uh, that situation is that when we find that you've got something serious, we don't want to let go until we can tell you how serious and what you really need to do with it. Right, right. I understand that. I, I I finally was able to, uh, about a year and a half later, two years later, I finally uh, went down to a doctor in Houston. And uh, he, I was able to go ahead and, he was di- he diagnosed me with um, Crohn's disease originally. And then he later diagnosed it as ulcerative colitis. But I was able to go through the whole uh, test with him. And, of course, he put he prescribed me the, uh, the Asacol and the prednisone and Theosol, that kind of stuff, uh, which helped, which helped in the short term. It really did. Well, now, you know, prednisone is, is what's used as an anti-inflammatory medication and is very helpful for relieving acute discomfort, the, you know, the, quieting down the flames. Mm-hmm. And uh, acetyl is one of those specialized drugs for uh, gut distress like uh, ulcerative colitis, but they all have their side effects, don't they? Yes, they do. Um, all I know is uh, after a couple of years of just dealing with it, just dealing with the pain, I, I, weighed, I think I weighed about 158 pounds at that point on a 6-1 frame, and uh, after seeing him, he got, me, he got me up to 177 pounds. Excellent. And so I thought, well, this problem solved, uh, but there were side effects. I started having joint pain and things like that, um, so it was taking some of the good with the bad. Exactly. You know, prednisone will accelerate your wearing out. It actually uh, speeds up degeneration problems. Right. And right. that's what you were feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, once again, I was just glad there was a, a Band-Aid <laughs> for you know, I just didn't think there was anything that could be done, and then this doctor did uh, at least help me in the short term. Kind of nice. Yeah. Um, what happened after that? Well, um, 
he was so far down in Houston, I, I decided, well, I need, to, I need to come up here a little bit closer. I, and I was referred to another doctor who was also down in Houston, but not quite as far. And I went to see him, and he, we did the uh, full colonoscopy, mm-hmm. and the diagnosis was the same, uh, ulcerative colitis. But this time it was in an, in an advanced state, and he said it was really serious. Uh, he went ahead and prescribed the acetal for me again and the prednisone. Now, this is after you'd already been under treatment before. Right. Mm-hmm. So the, the disease is moving on. The disease is moving on. I was having about, uh, you know, six bowel movements a day, per se, and he, should, he said I should have been having about 20 for the, the way the uh, intestinal tract looked. Right. It, it, was, it was just unbelievable to him. But he prescribed a, a new drug, uh, or he wanted to get me started on a new drug called 6-MP, which was a, a drug I think they use on leukemia patients. And we were real concerned about that because we were in the middle of having babies, me and my wife. And uh, one of the side effects with that is that it can cause birth defects. Exactly. Right. So we were real concerned at that point. And uh, anyway, he helped me, he helped me along. We, uh, I didn't stay on the 6-MP for very long. Um, I got frustrated with things because at... At a, after a while of being on the uh, other drugs, uh, they seem to stop working. They seem to stop being effective. So, you know, the problem is that means higher and higher dosages and more and more side effects. Absolutely, absolutely. They wanted me to take, uh, you know, six to eight acetal a day, I believe it was, and it was just getting expensive. Even though uh, insurance was covering some of it, it was just getting to the point where, uh, you know, what do I do? It's just uh, you can only afford so much. And uh, I had a, a nutritionist friend tell me one time, uh, she said to me that uh, taking the, those things is, is fine, and, you know, that's okay, but what happens, uh, what's going to happen is one day the, you're going to call your insurance company and they're going to say, nope, we're not, we're not going to pay for that anymore. You know, we've, we've helped you out for 10 years here, and that's the end of the line. Then what are you going to do? And that's when I had a problem. That's when I felt like I need to do something that goes beyond this. Now, how irrational is that? You know, you, you go to find help, you find help, and then somewhere down the line someone says we're taking the help away. And unfortunately, that's sometimes common in the insurance business. Right. I think, you know, of course, the dollar is the bottom line. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't think their uh, business is to be concerned about people's health. They just, <laughs> you know. It doesn't read well in the stock report at the end of the year. Right, right. So um, uh, that was the issue that I was faced with. I, I had this disease that was getting, only getting worse, and the doctors uh, kept prescribing Band-Aids, you know, and... Uh, I knew in the long term uh, that something had to be done because uh, I had a, you know, I wanted to live a normal, healthy life. I wanted to be a good husband and a good father for my kids. I've got three kids, all ages five and under. And I had goals I wanted to achieve, uh, you know, start my own business, get some schooling, that kind of thing. And you can't do that when you're feeling fatigued all the time. Exactly. It does limit your life. It really does. And uh, so uh, at that point, uh, you know, you, cl- you quoted Ecclesiastes earlier. Um, I just, uh, I'm a Christian, and I, and I just went to the book of James 1.5, where it says, uh, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men freely. And I, at that point, I lacked wisdom on what to do. Exactly. So uh, that's where I was at at that point. You know, it, it's interesting that you say that, because I think the, the turning point for a lot of people in the uh, alternatives in medicine or complementary or integrative medicine, preventive medicine, however you want to call it, is often when they reach a point where they understand that the best they know, what they know, has got them this far, and that's not far enough. And they actually turn to God for help. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, so, I believe uh, God, you know, Jesus is a great physician, and he could have uh, healed me right there on the spot, <clears throat> but I was, I was looking for wisdom. And uh, what I didn't know at the time, what I was looking for was a way to take care of my body without using drugs. Exactly. And that's what God revealed to me. And it uh, took a process. It took a while to do it because I'm stubborn. <laughs> and, <laughs> but uh, God, get, get God, I believe God did get through to me. You know, a, a lot of us are stubborn in, in regard to uh, what we're supposed to do. Uh, you know, I can explain it to you, but I can't do it for you. And uh, I think that uh, even with our children, we have these kinds of issues. And then when we look at what we're doing ourselves, we realize God has these kinds of issues with us, his children. Right. That's right. Absolutely. So where did you turn? Well, it's funny. Uh, you know, here we are asking from wisdom from God. Uh, I happened to be in church one Sunday morning, and my wife, we have a friend in church, uh, she was given a book uh, from one of our friends in church, and I didn't think any—I saw the, 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 co- the cover of it, and I didn't think anything of it, uh, the yeast syndrome. And, uh, you know, when you see the yeast syndrome, you, you know, or 
something about yeast. You know, I, I realized it was a, a medical book, and I and I just thought, well, this is a, a woman's thing. You know, it's you know, and she gave it to my wife because my wife has had psoriasis uh-huh. on the skin, and and uh, you know, seeking wisdom on that. Uh, we got the book home, and uh, we were in the kitchen, and I just picked it up, and I just looked at it, and I saw that it was written by Dr. John Trowbridge, which, lo and behold, I've been delivering mail to for the last five years. <laughs> I love it. And it was amazing, because the answer was right under my nose, and I never I never uh, realized it. How often that happens. Steve, hold that thought. It's now about 20 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME with the best medical updates ever. Let's pause briefly this for this public service announcement regarding the 100 Club in Houston. The mission statement is simple. Point one, to provide assistance to the dependents of certified peace officers and firefighters who are killed in the line of duty while protecting our lives and property. Number two, to provide law enforcement agencies with life-protecting equipment that cannot be secured through budgeted funds. And number three, to provide law enforcement with educational opportunities. You know, the 100 Club was organized in 1953. That's a 50-year-ago anniversary by... Leopold Meyer, Ray Elliott, R.H. Abercrombie, and Bill Smith and Jim Silverdollar West. 100 people who contributed $100 each formed the initial base, and today the membership exceeds 19,000. To date, over $19 million has been collected and dispersed to surviving dependents for special equipment to educate officers and to award outstanding officers and firefighters. And to date, the 100 Club has provided families with gifts in excess of $5.8 million. The first life-protecting equipment, bulletproof vests, was given to the law enforcement in 1977, and since then the 100 Club has provided a variety of special equipment to law enforcement agencies locally. Several hundred officers have benefited from scholarship and other educational opportunities provided by the 100 Club. It's recognized as a nonprofit organization with tax-deductible contributions. I've been a life member for many years. I encourage you to support the 100 Club. Give them a call, 713 713- Nine five two zero one zero zero seven one three nine five two zero one zero zero, or look them up on the web www.the100club.org. That's one zero zero club.org. Thank you, Steve, for sharing with us so straightforward about your diagnosis. Let's talk about how, when you read the yeast syndrome, what crossed your mind? Okay. Um, well, I, I started reading it, and once I started reading it, I couldn't put it down. Of course, the first thing I went to was uh, the references on the, my symptoms. The exactly, exactly. And then at that point, I thought, you know, i got to start at the beginning and just ask, read all the testimonials and uh, just everything. Uh, some of it was a little bit, uh, you know, the medical jargon and those kind of things. I didn't, I didn't quite understand, but... It's Technical book, stuff, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. But the book is an easy read, and it was really a great book. And I, I just couldn't put the book down. And my wife was, uh, I think she was looking at me like, well, when is it my turn, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> we only had the one copy. But um, I just started reading it, and I remember telling my wife, I think I'd gotten about three-fourths of the way through it, and I remember I, looking up and I, telling her, and I, I told her, I'm about 15 minutes away from making a phone call to Dr. Trowbridge, because it just seemed to me that that was the next step to uh, in my in order in uh, me trying to regain my health. Exactly. Yeah, and um, I was so tired of taking the drugs and uh, going that route, going the uh, medical route. And worsening. And worsening, exactly. Um, I know there's a uh, story in the Bible that talks about a, a woman who'd seen all these physicians and uh, spent all her money and got no better. And that's kind of how I felt. I could identify with that person. And uh, I just wanted to regain my health for the reasons I stated earlier. I just was... Uh, you know, I was uh, by this time I was in my mid 30s, and I was tired of feeling like I was in my mid 80s. It was just horrible. And so, we made the phone call and uh, talked to Kathy at the office. And uh, uh, it was funny. It was it was uh, not your uh, typical uh, routine, not your typical doctor's visit. Uh, I had to fill out like a 20 page uh, thing before I um was able to come visit you. <laughs> hours and hours. You know, we tell people, we're, we're being asked to do something that hasn't been done before for you. We want to find out everything that has been done before. Right. What works and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was very thorough, a lot of forms to fill out, but it was very much worth it. And it uh, t- told me a lot about myself and how serious I was about getting well and uh, what I was willing to do in order to get well. Uh, you know, there were, there were things involved. Uh, uh, specific diets and those kind of things and supplements I would be taking. And uh, But you just wanted to know where I was coming from and um, how I felt about uh, moving on and getting better. And I was dead serious about it. 
And so we did that, and uh, that was how it got got all started. Um, and the rest is history. I just uh, I visited you. I think it was in May, uh, May second. I think was my first visit, and uh, it's been great. It's kind of nice to be able to say it's been great, mm-hmm. because most uh, medical treatment programs, uh, great is defined as uh, the drugs are really controlling the problem now. Right. And you are on some drugs, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was uh, on about as many drugs as you can be legally. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I was just, uh, I, I just hated every, my, my wife would go to the pharmacy for me, and I just got so tired of telling her to refill my re- prescription for acetyl or re- refill the prednisone or whatever. I just got so tired of doing it because I knew deep down inside it wasn't uh, really working. It was just a short-term fix, and um, it wasn't the answer. And uh, I just, I wanted to be a person that was free from drugs anyway. Right. You know, I wanted to be this type of person. The strongest thing I ever had to take was maybe an aspirin every once in a while. And that was it. And, uh, you know, I I didn't see, the route I was taking, I didn't see any relief from that. And like I said, I was concerned that one day I was going to call that insurance company and they were going to say, nope, that's it. Right. Done with you. Right. Right. How are you feeling now? I'm feeling great. I really am. Uh and I say that with all authenticity. Um, today I weigh 183 pounds. I just got finished weighing myself about 15 minutes ago. And when I first came to see you, I was uh, I think I was 167, and now I'm 183 pounds. And that is a miracle. And I'm off the acetyl. I'm off the prednisone. I don't take those drugs anymore. Um, I'm taking um, a lot of supplements, I'm doing the supplement thing, which is you know good for you. A lot of vitamin C, a lot of uh, multivitamins, uh, a lot of good stuff. And I just feel so much better. I have my energy back. Um, I've got uh, I've got drive. I've been getting up early in the morning and, and doing things. Uh, I started working out again two weeks ago, lifting weights. Not anything heavy, just uh, getting getting back in the routine. And I was at a point last year um, where I had to have a uh, a guy come over and cut my grass every once a week last summer because I couldn't do it. I physically could not do it. And this summer he came over one time, and that's because I was out of town. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So it's wonderful. You know, when you talk about being on supplements, one of the nice things, uh, when I started doing this kind of medicine two dozen years ago, we didn't have a lot of tests available. We had to do a lot of clinical medicine, which is where all those questions came from on the history forms. But uh, one of the things we demonstrated with a, a simple test called the amino acid analysis on the urine is that we could we could look inside the metabolism going on inside you and document that you were short on on vitamin B6 and B12, and you were dramatically short on the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and beta-carotene, and dramatically short on magnesium, uh, moderately so on zinc and iron, and you certainly weren't getting the nitrogen, you know, the proteins that you need to build yourself, and that was leading you to getting more problems detoxifying in your liver. And uh, those, those tests were able to direct us in, in the right ways in terms of putting together a program for you very quickly. Right. Um, actually, I'm looking at a copy of that test right now. Uh-huh. And I see where you made the notes um, to where it shows where I was low, and, and you would prescribe this supplement for that and this supplement for, you know, another symptom. And, uh, and yeah, I can see where the correction came into being. Um, I remember telling my wife before we came and saw you um, that something was out of balance in my body. And I didn't know what it was. I thought, you know, I, you know, I'm a good guy. I take a couple of my multivitamins every day, and that kind of stuff. But that's not enough. Right. Um, you know, I think the average American is um, really ignorant when it comes to uh, really what his or her body needs on a daily basis. Exactly. Well, you know, the thing is, is if our diet were really good in terms of eating the farm fresh foods and eating a good selection, what I call a rainbow diet, things like that, then uh, we would do wonderful. In, in terms of maintaining ourselves, but when we have special needs like uh, regaining uh, a better health, restoring a function after something is disrupted, like with ulcerative colitis, then we have a much different set of needs, and it's hard to predict those, and that's why the testing matters so much. Right. Um, I think, uh, you, know, if, you know, if we lived in a utopian society, that would be great, but... Um it's hard to eat the proper foods every day. It is, isn't it? It really is, and especially um, someone with, uh, even with my situation, the ulcerative colitis, like you said, I, need so, I needed so much more than what I was getting, uh, you know, with my daily diet. And my problem, a lot of my problem was my job. You know, I'd have to eat out, out on the road somewhere. Exactly. Fast food. And right. 
the Great American Diet, and it was killing me. <laughs> we call that the Standard American Diet, or SAD for short. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Sad. Yeah. Well, you know, it's amazing, but uh, once you get on the program, um, you know, your program, your eyes are open to the way that people eat. And I was sitting in a restaurant uh, here in Humble one day, and uh, one of these places that's kind of a the buffet type places you go to the one place and you get your salad and another place and get the meat and whatever and i just sat there eating eating my food and you can eat healthy if you make a decision to eat healthy when you go in those places if you make a decision to you can uh i was sitting there eating and i was my eyes had been open i was watching what people were eating and and people are just literally killing themselves just fried foods and fried this and fried that and four kinds of desserts and uh, it was unbelievable to me. You know, Steve, the Surgeon General in 1988, uh, Dr. C. Everett Coop, said we're digging our graves with our teeth. We'll be right back with you. It's now about 30 minutes past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. Sometimes, especially when our attention is focused on our health problems, we forget that laughter is the best medicine. Our joke for today, a man goes to the eye doctor. The receptionist asks him why he is here man complains, I keep seeing spots in front of my eyes. Receptionist asks, have you ever seen a doctor? The man replies, no, just spots. You know, to create more smiles and laughter, try any or all of these humor strategies. Cultivate a playful attitude. Find humor in daily life. Learn to belly laugh and tell jokes, even if you're like me, kind of with some difficulties on telling jokes with the right pattern there. Learn to laugh at yourself, that's what I do when my joke doesn't come out quite right, and hang out with people who are fun to be with, who make you laugh. Bring some extra joy and happiness into your life and in the lives of those around you. You know, we find ourselves looking at how much a radio show like this depends on you to share your questions and ideas with me in order to make this successful for you. What topics do you want to learn more about? What diseases and treatments or nutritional supplements? What tests to find out what you really need? Over the past two dozen years, I've developed and improved integrative treatment programs to help many people suffering with frustrating illnesses, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, migraines and other headaches, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, hypoglycemia, diabetes, heart disease, even after surgery, and especially congestive heart failure, shortness of breath, poor circulation and leg pains, decreased memory, ulcerative colitis and other gut problems, as we're discussing today, frustrating skin conditions, disabling neck and back pains, sports injuries and arthritis, and so on. What disease problems would you like to know more about? What books do you want me to review? What authors do you want me to interview? Many of the leading authors and newsletter editors in preventive medicine have, personal, have been personal friends of mine for years. What questions do you want to have them answer? I'll be presenting common problems that are seen in doctor's offices, you know, the very reasons that you make office visits, and giving you practical hints on how you can better take care of yourself for best results. What problems do you want to learn more about? In my 25 years of practice, I've become acutely aware that very few people know that simple, effective, and cost-conscious solutions are available to help with their problems, such as Steve was talking about, worried about what happens in the future when the insurance company says no. Few people realize that several of the problems for which they are seeing different specialists are often related to the same cause. For example, diabetes shows as high blood sugars, which cause rusting in the blood vessels everywhere. That causes heart disease and poor memory, strokes and poor vision, macular degeneration and blindness, kidney failure, even leading to dialysis, poor circulation and leg pains, even gangrene. Rather than resorting to a dozen specialists later on, correcting what is causing one problem, the diabetes, might well give you improvements for several of the problems that frustrate and concern you now and later. We mean really correcting the underlying problem. And that's what this show is all about. And that's what we're all about at Life Celebrating Health and Humble. Feel free to ask for a consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. Several listeners called for more details on our exclusive cashable voucher program, which makes health care alternatives much more affordable Please feel free to call Life Celebrating Health for more information on bonus savings for you. You're listening to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. And remember, we also depend on you to invite your family and friends to tune in and join us here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever, Saturday mornings from 6 to 7. 
Steve, let's get back to your story. You're learning so much about taking care of yourself, and you're seeing the mistakes that others are making. Absolutely. Um, you know, like we talked about the Great American Diet, um, uh, it's, I, I just, my eyes were open. I, I saw what I, not only what others were doing, but what I was doing to myself and just uh, eating the hamburgers and the, the fried chicken and things like that. Um, when I came to visit you, uh, along with the supplement uh, program, uh, you put me on a phase one a celebration of healthy eating program. And uh, although it was uh, somewhat difficult at first, um, uh, you know, when you uh, keep everything in perspective and, and you decide that you're going to live healthy, it was rather easy to, stay, to stick to. And even my wife was amazed. Uh, one of the things was drinking water, and I'd never been a water drinker in all my life. Um, and uh, I drank a lot of iced tea and, and Dr. Pepper. <laughs> that was, right. Yeah, and that stuff's no good for you. But um, uh, my wife was just amazed at... Uh, in 30 days, the transformation that took place, uh, I literally drank nothing for, nothing but water. I didn't have to, but that's all I wanted uh, because it was hydrating my body. And I just felt just that one thing right there, Just uh, I felt so much better. Now, now you, there you are, giving away the shop for us there. But, you know, <laughs> it, it's so true. We dehydrate ourselves because we take all these other liquids and then call that, you know, our fluid for the day. No, water is the true fluid. Everything else has some problem associated with it. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, my wife, you know, uh, our housekeeper had made some iced tea and left it in the refrigerator. And three weeks went, went by, I did not touch a drop of it. And they wow. they were just amazed. And um, But I was amazed. Uh, well, another thing was uh, in the mornings I would drink one cup of coffee. Now, I was not a big coffee drinker, but I'd drink a cup of coffee to wake up. I drank water in the morning. I, I stopped drinking the coffee altogether. I thought I needed it to wake up. Well, I didn't. I found out that water... Uh, you know, if, if anybody listening today is not a big water drinker, I found out that it's an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> and when you get used to it, uh, you don't want anything else. Uh, now, I might have a glass of iced tea occasionally. Sure, as a treat. As a treat, yeah. But um, it's just that uh, that alone is just um, was just amazed me, uh, just totally amazed me. And and then some of the food that um, was on the phase one diet. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, the Mevi diet: the meat, eggs, vegetables, and yogurt. Um, I was never a yogurt eater, eater. Uh, but the yogurt's got the uh, good bacteria in it, and that uh, I talked to my wife, and we both agreed that two of the things that helped me, uh, uh, you know, if it was nothing else, was the water, drinking the water, and the yogurt, uh, two to three cups a day. You know, Steve, that's what we mean when we say easy, simple, effective, cost-conscious solutions that can help so many people so dramatically. They, you know, they're all fearful that everything costs a fortune. It doesn't have to. That's right. That's right. Um, I've got to go to the dentist here in a, in a couple of weeks, and the cost of going to the dentist is, uh, oh, it's six times more than what I what I paid to get my health back here. Isn't that awesome? You know, um, and oh, I'd much rather spend the money somewhere else. But but um, I've got to get that done. But um, it's not it's not a lot of money when it uh, when it comes to your health. It really isn't. And if, and if you're like me and you're looking for an answer to get away from all the drugs, it's money well spent. Exactly. It's an investment in your future. Absolutely. You know, the, the funny part is, is uh, so many people have um, assets that they've acquired over life, and they don't want to part with them. And I think that's largely because, you know, in the past they've spent a lot of money on traditional, regular drugs and surgery medical care. It didn't help. And they're reluctant to make an investment in their future with a natural approach. Right. I think um, America, uh, the average America is, um, average American, he's, he or she is conditioned to say, well, I need to go to the doctor and get a prescription. And this doctor will give me a prescription and then it'll be okay. Uh, where it's just like a Band-Aid. Um, the average American is not conditioned to say, wait a second, let's go, let's go in the direction of health. What's, what's healthy for my body? Drugs are not healthy for your body. Uh, you know, let's go in the direction of what can I do that will change things in my body for the long term. Right. And, you, go ahead. You know, please. Well, and, and that was just, uh, you know, epiphany, an epiphany for me um, when I realized that um, the drugs were not doing anything for me in the long term. Then I needed, a, I, I needed wisdom, and that's, you know, that's what was revealed to me. It was just something I needed to do to take care of my body and to heal, to cause it to heal itself, to, to get back to a healthy way of living. Absolutely right. You know, I tell people drugs are stoppers. Drugs don't make things happen inside your body. They stop 
things from happening. And when they stop the uncomfortable stuff, that's great. But then when they stop the good stuff, the normal reactions that you need, the metabolism on the inside, that's not great. And uh, when you say uh, you talk about praying for wisdom, uh, what I'd like to share with you is that we sometimes forget that spiritual centering is an important part of healing, getting better, and staying healthier. It's about 40 minutes past the hour, and our verse today is from Proverbs 3, 18. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. Remember that. Wisdom, that's what you gain in order to run your life more naturally. Now, Steve, when you talk about gaining all these insights, we're talking over just a few months. Is that correct? Yes, we are. Uh Like I said, um, I saw you for the first time back in May. And one of the things you had me do was to keep a journal, uh, a daily um, notebook of the symptoms that were uh, that were happening in my body. And also, I went ahead and kept a, a journal of what I was eating every day to make sure uh, I would stay on the program because it's so easy to be tempted to, you know, cheat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, and if somebody brings in a pizza, you know, you want to have a slice. But but uh, I kept a journal of my symptoms and. I'm looking at it right now, and I just back in May, you know, the symptoms were so horrible, um, just fever and diarrhea and headaches and congestion, all all sorts of nasty things. And in just in just a short time, things turned around. It was just amazing. And I was not. I was. We were talking the other day. I was very skeptical, very skeptical, because I've been one of those that was conditioned. You know, you got to go to the doctor and. Um, you know, medical professionals give you all these drugs, and that'll make you better. I was conditioned to that, but I found out very quickly that I didn't need the stuff. And uh, when I came to see you, I was, I was amazed, uh, and I think you were even amazed at how quick I, came, I turned around. Very, very quick. Yeah, and uh, it just, um, I think it was a month and a half, six weeks into the program, and the symptoms vanished. Now, they did reoccur uh, shortly thereafter, and we and we both said, no, what what did I do different? What changed here? And we found out that I needed to adjust some of the uh, supplements that I was taking. And when I did that, uh, as of August 14th, I've had no symptoms of ulcerative colitis at, at all, none. And that's amazing. That's just outstanding. That's that's basically three and a half months now. Exactly. And and the nice news about this, when you look at it, is that, you know, we're, we're treating you for the yeast syndrome, we're uh, changing your diet. We're changing the uh, uh, water intake, the exercise, nutritional supplements, simple things. And, you know, Steve, let me share with you. I went onto the Internet uh, getting ready for this show, and I found a couple of books. One is by a fellow Calibian who has been a sufferer since age 13 mm-hmm. with uh, inflammatory bowel disease. And uh, his, uh, his book has some interesting chapters, Coping with Prednisone, Living with an Ostomy, Finding Emotional Support. It says in here, the author is an expert in the field of inflammatory bowel disorders. He was diagnosed with Crohn's disease over 20 years ago at age 13. And throughout the book are the warm and wise voices of over 40 people who have been there and done that. And then Jill Sklar wrote a book about Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Uh, She was diagnosed with Crohn's in 1989, quickly discovered the knowledge she sought, and... uh, she said, wait a second, this, this stuff isn't available for me for everyday coping skills. So she educated herself on every aspect of management and treatment of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And chapters in her book include surgical options and tips for coping with surgery and hospital stays and choosing the right medical team and discussing your condition with family, friends, and coworkers and current medical research and medications. Are you interested in reading these books? No. <laughs> oh. Not really. Guess they don't relate to you anymore. No, they don't. Um, one of the first things you told me is when I walked in, is you told me we're not going to look at you like you're a disease. We're not going to treat the disease. We're going to treat the person. We're going to help you get better. This disease is not going to be a part of your life. Uh, I've gotten mail uh, sent to my home, uh, ulcerative colitis groups and things like that, me here on Monday night, so-and-so. Uh, I have no interest in being any part of that. Yeah. You know, we, we tried uh, early on when I wrote the yeast syndrome, while I was in the process of writing it, we were trying to form uh, support groups. And we found out that it was hard to do when people got over their problems with the yeast syndrome, which includes problems in their gut, like ulcerative colitis and so on, that uh, they didn't want to hang around with people who were still sick. They wanted to get on with their lives and right. <laughs> stop talking about it. Absolutely. So I think support groups work for people who can't get better because the uh, treatment uh, program isn't working. Uh, yeah, I feel for people that are like that because, um, 
you know, if you really, uh, if you really want to get better, even with this disease that it looks like there's no way out, there is a way out. Um, I don't, I don't think my case is unique. Um, I think, I think this is possible for anybody if they'll just um, do what it needs, do what needs to be done, and come give you a visit and sit down and talk with you. There is an alternative plan, and that plan works. And I'm not saying that I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm saying that because it it actually worked. It actually worked in my life, and it's continuing to work. That is just wonderful. Steve, we'll be right back with you. It's now about 45 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. For your better health, I'd like to share with you this special announcement relating to the holidays. And you know, we sometimes overdo lots of things, including alcohol. I'd like to remind you that Alcoholics Anonymous is a voluntary worldwide fellowship of men and women from all walks of life who meet together to attain and maintain sobriety. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking, and there's no dues or fees for AA membership. Incidentally, this program can be very helpful for people who have a drug habit as well. Current membership, it's estimated there are more than 100,000 groups and over 2 million members in 150 com- countries. you got to remember, you are not alone if you have a problem. AA is a program of total abstinence. Members simply stay away from one drink one day at a time, and sobriety is maintained through sharing experience, strength, and hope at group meetings and through the suggested 12 Steps for Recovery from Alcoholism. AA was started in 1935 by a New York stockbroker and an Ohio surgeon, both now deceased, who had been hopeless drunks. Now, of course, they didn't start out that way. It went from social drinking and got worse from there. They founded AA in an effort to help others who suffered from the disease of alcoholism and to stay sober themselves. And AA grew with the formation of autonomous groups, first in the United States and then around the world. To find an AA group in your town, look in any telephone directory under Alcoholics Anonymous, and volunteers will be able to help you on the phone. You can also look on the World Wide Web at www.aa.org. And remember, please, that alcoholism is a disease, and alcoholism is not just social drinking. Alcoholism is getting in the way in your life. And those who have gut diseases, diabetes, and so on, alcohol is always making things worse. Steve, you had some interesting comments about the fact that you look at life differently now. Well, absolutely. It's just so much easier to look at life when you feel better. You know, they say uh, that if you have your health, you have everything. And right now I've got my health, and it just feels so much better. Uh, Your attitude on life is so much different. Um, You can get back to your your dreams and your goals and the things you want to get accomplished. Um, When you always feel bad, uh, you just want to make it through the day. Exactly. I bet you can even think about raising children and having fun. Absolutely. I was I was wrestling with my uh, kids last night, and when I say kids, they all three wrestle with me at once. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if that's a good thing, because <laughs> they, uh, they can beat me up pretty good, but I'm just thankful for it. You know, the joy that we have in the kind of medicine that we do is seeing so many people get on with the usual things in life, you know, playing with their children and grandchildren and and uh, going out when they want and doing what they want and not feeling limited by their illness process. Uh, before I started the program, we went up to Galveston, and uh, I was just sick the entire time we were up there. It was a little vacation for us, and my little boy wanted to go play, and I just remember looking at him. I was laying in the bed, and I could not do anything. And I just at that point, I just said, you know, Lord, this is just the worst possible feeling in the world. Uh, what good is it for me to have children if I can't be a father to them? And just even last night, I was able to do anything that they wanted, and it was just so much fun. It's just so, it's, the perspective is entirely different, and it's just a great feeling. It really is. You know, this is what I do this for. This, this, is, this is the joy I get as well when you share like that. Right, right. It's, it's, it's well worth it. Anybody that would undertake this, they're not wasting their time or their money. It's, well worth, uh, it's, it's just well worth it. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Steve, thanks so much for sharing your story with us today, and we just wish you all the best in your future. My pleasure, Dr. Colbridge. Have a great day. You too. So what is the take-home message from today's featured guest? Well, it's, it's simply this. Even severe, serious diseases, like ulcerative colitis, can be very successfully treated when the real cause is identified and properly treated. You know, one of the problems is we're not always sure we identify the real cause, but with natural healing, really what I have to do is simply find what's blocking you from getting better, get rid of it, what's missing, what trace factors do you need to get better, and make sure those are provided, 
and find those switches and turn them on. Most diseases, or perhaps all, are not deficiencies of drugs or of surgery, but rather malfunctions or altered adaptations. In other words, problems that need to be treated not with drugs, but with restoring the way your metabolism works. And people are sometimes confused about the word metabolism. All that means is what you do when you do what you do on the inside. It's the whole ball of wax, all of the things that you do. Beverly and Kima emails us with a frustrating problem. Her doctor says that yeast is normal in everyone, so it can't be causing health problems for her. And she wonders, is he right? Well, today's program of Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge has been brought to you not by the number seven and not by the letter M, but instead once again by the book The Yeast Syndrome, a Bantam bestseller I wrote in 1986. H.D. and Tomball says, I was diagnosed with the yeast syndrome one year ago, and I had previously been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, just like Steve. All my symptoms have dramatically improved, and I have more energy than I have had in the last 10 years. L.I. and Umble says, I am so much improved, I can't believe it. I can't tell I have fibrocystic breast disease anymore. I have no bloating, no pain, nausea, constipation. Thanks very much. DG in Houston says, I came to Dr. Trowbridge after seeing several doctors who prescribed medicines and treatments which never seemed to help my Crohn's inflammatory bowel disease. I've been coming to Dr. Trowbridge now for four months, and I'm glad to say I can see an end to all my stomach problems, just the way Steve was talking about a quick recovery. Now, that doesn't happen for everyone, but it sure is encouraging and a lot of fun when it does. MC in Houston says, I came here six months ago with severe rectal itching that had been bothering me for 20 years, and no physicians had helped me. I also had minimal amount of energy. The itching has been reduced, and my energy level has increased noticeably. I believe wholeheartedly in the holistic treatment program that Dr. Trowbridge administers. Now, you know, finding out about what's going on with yourself can be very complicated. J.D. in Cyprus says, before seeing Dr. T, I had been to three other doctors and spent many thousands of dollars on tests with all the doctors telling me nothing was wrong. But I was still sick and not getting any better. I was diagnosed as a nervous stomach and given medication that later I found out took the acid out of my stomach when I needed more acid. After seven weeks, I started to improve by being on Nystatin, that's treatment for yeast, supplements, and a special diet. You know, when we talk about the yeast syndrome, indeed what the doctor said is absolutely correct. Yeast is normal in everyone. It's not a problem when it's normal. You see, because it normally grows harmlessly on your skin. That's the Candida albicans yeast germ. Just like pesky weeds grow in your lawn. And weeds are merely a nuisance when they overgrow. But when your immune system defenses get weak and the yeasts overgrow, they can be very, very harmful. They abnormally grow inside your gut in excessive amounts that cause a poison called candidotoxin that travels through your 60,000 miles of blood vessels to interfere with vital processes in your 10,000 trillion body cells. Now, the Japanese studies in the early 80s showed that vitamins and minerals are lost, hormones and enzymes are blocked. As your defenses weaken further, you continue to worsen with more illness problems. Hopping on to what we call the medical merry-go-round, seeing one specialist after another, until you finally get proper treatment for the yeast syndrome. Now, have these body effects from the yeast syndrome really been proven? Well, absolutely yes. There are thousands of articles and reports in the medical journals, not only in the United States, but around the world. And they've shown serious problems in every body system as a result of yeast toxin effects or direct yeast invasion. And indeed, treatment for those problems has been absolutely miraculous for some people. So when your doctor says yeast is normal in everyone, he's talking about just normal yeast, not the ones that's overgrowing. Well, how does it get to overgrow? Well, that's how you get affected by the yeast syndrome. And the answer is as simple as A, B, C, D. A, antibiotics, which kill the good bacteria in your large gut as well as the bad ones causing infections. That allows yeast to grow. B, birth control pills, which change hormone patterns. And, of course, later on then female hormone replacement therapies for menopause. C, cortisone, which changes hormone patterns and defenses and cortisone is so commonly prescribed, and it's now even available over the counter. 
in creams. And D, the deplorable diet with overloads of sugar, starches, fats, and processed and cooked foods. You know, we talked earlier about diabetes and how seriously that gets us in trouble, and diabetes certainly predisposes people to the yeast syndrome. And when you have pre-diabetic conditions, thanks to this deplorable diet, you're setting yourself up for a major fall. So A, B, C, D, antibiotics, birth control pills, cortisone, and deplorable diet, but there's even more. We found now as we're looking at people not just in their 40s and younger, but older folks, that other factors have contributed as well, such as E, F, G, H, E for environmental toxins, such as the startling realization that there is no clean air, no clean water or clean food, and F, our full of stress lifestyles, because we've become chaos addicts. And G, genetic differences, where some people simply require more vitamins and minerals than their diets can supply. And H, health habits, such as too little sleep, not enough exercise, skipping meals, and poisons such as alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. Of course, there's a lot more on these topics in the Yeast Syndrome book, and we strongly, strongly invite you to please get that book and learn about it, because what we're talking about is something that can affect your life, literally, for the rest of your life. And you know, the treatment program is pretty simple. We have a slogan called, Don't Stay Sick, D-O-N-T, Stay Sick. D for dietary changes, the absolute first thing that you do, as shown in the easy-to-follow four-phase eating program in the yeast syndrome, a guide to a lifetime of better health. O in Don't is for over-the-counter nutritional supplements that help control the growth of yeast, such as acidophilus bacteria, the good ones, garlic, caprylic acid, and others. N is for nutritional supplements that help reverse the damaging effects of yeast toxin, such as magnesium, activated vitamin B6, and fatty acids. And T, the final step, is treatment with prescribed medications. Only the last medications must be monitored closely by a physician, but the others can be things that you can start putting into your life now to start making a major change in how well you actually feel and do in this life with a whole variety of problems. Again, The Yeast Syndrome, published by Bantam Books, written by me, Dr. John Trowbridge, to help people like you. Next time, we'll share some other special features with you. We're going to talk about arthritis due to injuries. Now, we want to talk about returning to national championship level sports performance. In other words, people who have a real motivation to getting their arthritis fixed because they want to be the best. But don't you want to get your arthritis fixed because you want to feel the best? Do you have it in you to regain optimal function? Because, see, that's what we're going to talk about, how you can learn to do what you want to do, honestly. Remember, drive safely, take your time, breathe deeply in and out, survive, flourish, and prosper in this Christmas shopping season. And how hard that is to do sometimes. Remember that you'll have a lot of time in the parking lot called a major highway to do those things. Our production engineer today is Mark Fisher. Production assistants, Catherine Hill and Kathy Guyon. Thanks for joining me today to learn more practical pointers that can help you to regain and maintain better health. Audio tape and CD copies of this show are available for your personal reference. And please, to share with family and friends, simply call one 800 Fix pain for details. I invite your feedback. What do you want to hear more about? What questions do you want answered? Who would you like for me to interview? Please share your ideas by email. Info, I-N-F-O, at healthchoicesnow.com. That's all run together, healthchoicesnow.com. By fax, that's 281-540-4329. By mail, Call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for the address, or feel free to call to talk with one of our treatment assistants and let us know what you want to hear or what information we might send you. Receive our free e-newsletter simply by sharing your email address with us and enjoy the free downloads available on our website, www.healthchoicesnow.com. Because if you don't know you have choices, then you don't. Remember, if your money, your time, your effort your comfort, or even your life is at stake. And we do mean that. We're talking about really recovering and staying well for a longer time. Get the very best answers and the very best treatment you can find. Rely on experts who can make sense out of your problems, who have the experience 
to produce results for you. When life is your choice, failure is not an option. Our message is one of hope for a healthier future, and we aim to produce those results for you. Invite your family and friends to join me next week, Saturday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever, exclusively on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. Have a great day and a wonderful week.